as the Minister of Defense and Vice President. He famously or infamously said that Mbuya was attacked that time. The same Mbuya was attacked in 1985 by some forces. And uh, Mwanga said that the actions had been the acts of uncoordinated troop movements. <laughs> that those were uncoordinated troop movements, the ones who attacked Mbuya in 1985. So what we have now is a repeat of 1985, uncoordinated troop movement. I think it's ominous. It spells uh, 1985 was obviously the year that uh, the government collapsed. Because again, institutions had, had collapsed. So I think this shows you where we are. the trajectory of dictatorships. I think we are coming to the terminal stages where all institutions are collapsing. Okay. okay. Um, it's really very sad that he has left at this stage and in the way he has. Eliya Kategaya was a very principled man. He was patriotic. He loved his country. He was a Pan-Africanist. And he was a good-natured man. In fact, very good-natured that he was taken advantage of by his colleagues. I do not believe that Elia Kategaya died uh, when they said he died in Nairobi Hospital or that he died of the blood clot that has been the declared cause of death. I think Kategaya died multiple deep stab wounds in his back. He was stabbed several times in his back. And I think the worst stab wound was caused by the violation of the 1995 Constitution in abolishing the term limits. In 2001, when I stood to challenge in seven, my colleagues called a meeting in Honorable Amanya's office. Amanya by then was uh, Minister of Public Service. And we met in Wandega, their office. And Kategaya led the uh, argument attempting to convince me not to challenge him seven by saying that he was absolutely sure the constitution would be respected and Museven would be seeking his last term. And I could see the conviction in his eyes. He was saying there is absolutely no way the constitution can be changed. So I think in Changwanzi, when he stood up and opposed, first of all, even the suggestion, I think when the suggestion finally came that they wanted to change the constitution, I think he was horrified beyond repair. But I think in Changwanzi was the last straw when the movement focused there, supported the idea of violating the constitution. He argued very um, uh, emotionally uh, for not changing the constitution, but uh, his colleagues were determined. And from that time, 
it has never been the same Katega. I interacted with him when he was briefly with us in the FDC. I interacted with him after he had gone back to the movement. And it was not the same with him that we knew. In fact, in the, about a year after he had gone back to the movement, I had the uh, opportunity of a chance to opportunity of sitting with him on in an aeroplane. We are traveling together. We met by accident and sat. We are seated in adjacent seats. And he lamented very emotionally about what he found in the movement after his return. He said that the seven he had left uh, in 203, was it 203 or 20, that he was completely different from the seven he found, and that they had no point of contact and that he had decided he would stay and try to do whatever he can do for East Africa. But he was not engaged with his colleagues in government, really. He had resigned uh, in that respect. Sad, I would have, of course, loved to uh, be there to pay my respects. And in fact, among other things, intended to pass by parliament yesterday. But um, the criminal police has its uh, ideas. Kategaya was the national political commissar after me. Um, and uh, we share that history. Uh, it's sad that those who became national political commissars in the NRM uh, in difficult situations all over. Tegaya in the box, Besiji in the prison, Papakabulo in the grave. <laughs> uh, but the struggle continues and we believe that uh, what we fought for will eventually be realized.